Hey YouTube, welcome back to New Rock City. I'm your host, Stephen Moss. Hi YouTube, I am your co-host, Lauren Tiz. Welcome to the show. And each week on the show, we bring you a brand new band. We interview them and play some of their music. Today, on episode 18, we have Autumn Fires with us from London, England. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hi. The first thing I wanted to do is um, just have you guys introduce yourselves and say what you do in the band. Yeah, um, my name's Charlotte and I'm vocals. Uh, my name's Callum, I play guitar. Uh, I'm Neil, I play bass. I'm Ryan, I play drums. Thank you guys so much. How would you guys describe your music? It's um, like quite modern, upbeat pop punk, so similar to bands like Neck Deep, State Champs, Stand Atlantic kind of thing like post 2010s very nice how did the band get started you know that was just me and charlotte wanting to sort of start start playing some music with you know with other people in the band so yeah we were just looking for sort of members we've been writing music for what a year before we before we did sort of anything with it and yeah we found we found the other guys through various different ways to be fair i think ryan was a facebook post um, Jamie was in my band and Neil, I think was Facebook as well. Uh, yeah, I joined like uh, January. So I'm like, I'm like the baby of the band. Uh, I'm still fair. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Were you guys in other bands or is this your, your first band? We've all been in other bands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've all, most of us have been, some of us are in other bands as well at the moment, but we've all been in uh, bands before or like been gigging before. And, um, but this is definitely, for me, definitely it's my, my, favorite one by a long shot and um, it's really nice to just play with people who are really like-minded and want the same kind of things the same kind of sound well during the show today i'm gonna end up playing um four of your original songs and one of your cover songs i wanted to start out by playing my favorite one can you tell us a little about about the song bones we wrote bones last year and um, and it was um one of the singles that we are writing just sort of as a, as a starting out band really and um, it's mainly about toxic relationships and toxic friendships because I've had um personally I've had a few um friendships and relationships where they've gone a bit downhill and all the sort of feelings that I felt about that I kind of channeled into a few of these songs and Bones is definitely um one of the main ones and um, it's kind of like a moving on song so taking all the negativity that you feel about about things or people and instead of just telling them screw you it's about like kind of <laughs> expressing it and getting out in a healthy way and also you know like um making music that, that we love and bringing out a song that we think is catchy and, and and just a fun song really it's really upbeat very nice now i was reading about that song and I read that um, the band actually uh, mixed and produced that song completely, you know, by yourselves. Was that the case with all your songs or just that one? Um, that, that's not even the case with, with Bones, to be fair. I oh, mean, okay. we wrote, yeah, we, we wrote it all here. Like, um, I think we did that here in flat, didn't we? Yeah. But um, yeah, so we wrote them all. We do all the like, guitar work, vocals, programmable drums, and then... Bones and Back to Life, um, our latest one that was out sort of what three weeks ago now, and were all mixed by uh, one of our fellow fellow bands on our management uh, by Luke from Royals. Oh, okay. We did do like like demos here um, ourselves um, at our like sort of home studio. Home studio being just uh, mic'd up and all the sort of stuff in our flat, but um, <laughs> <or> our apartment. <laughs> but yeah, um, we 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 kind of. Um, started to um get our sound going a little bit and then we would pass it on to our pro to the producer that we're really close with or other producers at the time so it's, it's a little bit right but it was definitely all the amazing stuff that you hear was 100% Luke <laughs> awesome <laughs> now I also read that Charlotte you drew all the artwork is that correct yeah Ooh. oh very oh, nice cool. <laughs> all right so uh, my research is mostly yeah. true <laughs> yeah. Yes. oh yeah <laughs> there we no, go. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one is right. Yeah, I, I, I did draw all the art myself. I used to have it until about a day ago. I had it sitting right here, which would have been cool to just show you. But now oh, it's, yeah. it's somewhere in the flat. Oh. And it'll take me to find it. But yeah, <laughs> um, I've, I've always been quite artistic. I feel like the, the two things that I'm good at are art and singing, and those are my favorite things anyway. So it's nice to oh, combine that's... together. 
yeah. catch them into one. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I saw, uh, I think it was on your Facebook, like a butterfly drawing. Is that yes. an original by you? Yeah. Yeah. It will be. Oh, oh I loved it. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. That's cool. That's, a, I always wanted to be an artist, but I just don't, <laughs> I wasn't blessed with the gift. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, I mean, I mean, anyone, anyone can do art. Like if you, if you just put a little piece of yourself into into anything it, it can it can be art you can do it if you want <laughs> maybe i'll give it a go now <laughs> <laughs> here is the song bones by autumn fires Welcome back to the show, everyone. Um, I wanted to ask, do you guys have like one songwriter or is it a band effort? What is the uh, the writing process like for you guys? The process is re really like I will listen. Well, it's we're changing it now that we're a bit more sort of flexible with it. But sort of it's like I'll come up with something and I'll just do it on, on Cubase, just write it here in the studio. And then I'll send it to everyone and be like, hey, what do you think? What changes can be made? And then we'll either like it, you know, and work on it, or it'll just be like, nah, not quite what we're going for, and and we'll leave it. But sort of recently, we've been doing sort of like video chats whilst we're whilst I'm writing. Like I'll have my guitar in front of me, and I have like Neil, you know, Neil did the last one with us sort of a few days when we were just having, you know, just a quick see if we can yeah. pump something out. And yeah, that's I think that's yeah. the way we're going to do it sort of from now. Yeah, gotcha. It's nice, Great. yeah. It's like you'll get to throw like a little piece, a little bit of a flavor and a piece of what we're kind of inspired by. Because I think 
what's cool about us as a band is we have like a very good idea of what we're going for, but we all draw inspiration from a lot of different things uh, and a lot of different kind of spectrums of the genre. So being able to kind of like put different flavors of different things in is, and getting like a whole kind of like fleshed out collaborative effort on everything is is super awesome. So yeah, it's, it's been fun. It's been really cool. I was just gonna say we're all quite active in, in a lot of the, the pop punk scene as well. And we follow, a lot of sort of newer bands and we also absolutely love a lot of older bands so we try and have a little bit of like sort of noughties pop punk vibes and a little bit of post 2010 vibes and we do take a lot of inspiration from a lot of different bands talking about your inspirations um is there like a certain thing that helps you get in the mindset do you go a certain place or what do you do to get in that mindset of writing lyrics and writing songs? I mean, for me, when I'm doing like guitar and stuff like that, I'll, I'll literally just be roaming around the flat and I'll just be like humming along something and then I'll be like, right, well, I'm doing that. But there's mm-hmm. not, I wouldn't say for me, there's any sort of specific process to it at all. Gotcha. I'm the opposite. <laughs> like I, I really have to get into the vibe. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'll be driving in my car and I'll just be having a little sing song and I'll start coming up with stuff. And then when I get home, I'm like, okay, I'm like writing it down. Write it down. And, 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 and then other times, um, the guys will come up with something that I absolutely adore and I will sit on our sofa and just just kind of listen to it and kind of get in the zone and and, and just vibe with it, really. And write down anything um, as much as I possibly can that, that kind of springs to mind. And then I'll narrow it down to my absolute fave bits. And that's yeah. pretty much how we kind of process it. But a lot of it is just honestly just kind of writing how you feel because I don't really um I just I, I feel like as long as I'm honest about the lyrics that I write somebody will be able to relate to it mm-hmm. so so Neil and Ryan what do you guys do to kind of get in that mindset so I've I've been writing songs since I was about since I was in high school now so many oh. many years ago. um <laughs> so what's really weird is uh no for like all the other bands and all the other projects I've been in uh I've sung and play this could like play guitar. So I've okay. like started with like lyrics and melodies and then kind of built up the songs around that. And normally I'd like Charlotte said, I write about kind of like uh like things that happen in my life and things like that and drawing from my own experiences and kind of putting like using it as a kind of cathartic kind of process. Um but what's been really fun being in this band now is like I try and kind of picture melodies that I think would sound really cool if Charlotte was singing them uh and kind of like with ideas in my head I'm always like ah oh, so if Charlotte belted that it'd sound awesome but then there's me trying to like record a voice memo of it like singing properly in my head voice like right out of my range and it sounds yeah, like a yeah, drowning yeah, yeah. It's just like, <laughs> yeah it's like it's yeah. um but uh but yeah um so yeah I just kind of I try and I guess in my head, I try and picture how it will sound when you've got Charlotte singing it amazingly and kind of, it sounds a massive big thing. And I start on an acoustic and build it up from that. Um, I just have the idea that like, if you can, if a song sounds cool on it, just with like an acoustic and a, like, and the voice, then Mm. it's a good song. It's like fundamentally a good song. So that's kind of how I approach it. But, but yeah. That's awesome. I basically just listen to the drums that Callum sends over and decide if they're good or not. (laughs) <laughs> i'll have a little input i'll have an input into into other stuff as well like there's been times where i've said this guitar doesn't work it sounds too much like this or it sounds too much like another song we've got already yeah, yeah you've written like you've written drum parts where i need to have four arms to be able to play them <laughs> yeah. so you know we we mix that up a bit but yeah i mean overall we kind of just callum will come up with with the main part Obviously, like they're saying, like Neil, Neil and uh, and our other guitarist are getting a bit more involved at the moment with it. But yeah, usually they'll send it over, and I'll just kind of give feedback based on based on what I feel, really. Whether it's mm. too simplistic, too complicated, too samey to other stuff that we've got or other other bands have got. Um, the next song I wanted to play from you guys was actually your Katy Perry cover. Um, what about that song? Waking up in Vegas made you want to cover it. I think that was any of any of us. We had a, I think it was a previous member yeah, idea, wasn't it? Yeah, was it was Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Hi, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just like he was just playing the chords to it, and he was like, "Guess the song." And yeah, he, we, you know, once it was waking up in Vegas, we just kind of wrote with it, and just we the idea was let's just take a pop song and make it not pop. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
there's been yeah. one or two awkward times when someone has said, "Oh, my favorite original song from yours is that." Like, um, <laughs> they come to make it, and we're like, "Oh, wow, thanks so much." <laughs> you just write that. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, we're a small band, so it's an easy mistake to make. But gotcha. yeah, it's, yeah, it's actually a wicked song, though. Like, I can't believe more people haven't heard of it, but. Yeah, we, I well, I think that's uh that's actually kind of uh, flattering though. Is so when people yeah. hear that song of you, they're like, "Oh man, you guys nailed it so much they think it's yours." That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's a compliment. So here's "Waking Up in Vegas" by Autumn Fires. to the show everyone i wanted to ask you guys because i think this is an interesting question to see how people evolved in their lives like with their music um hmm. what was the first album you guys ever bought so my conveniently the first album i ever bought was my favorite album of all time which is right by paramore and it's like oh, the okay. most influential album of my entire life my bedroom when I was like 15 to 19 was coated in Paramore posters <laughs> and like, my life posters and stuff. So I'm absolutely obsessed with Paramore. But um, it, was, it was Riot and that album is incredible. Um, and I also bought another album at the same time, which was American Idiot by Green Day, which is oh. a fantastic oh, nice. album as well. It's a good um, yeah, definitely. But um, those are, I wouldn't say we are massively, massively influenced by green day but we are definitely influenced by, by power so um yeah that's my absolute favorite so i'm really glad that you asked that because it, it means i get to talk about right <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember i'm trying to remember i'm asking my brain someone else go <laughs> um, my name is charlotte i've got two at the same time one of them i get a lot of hate for because it's a nickelback album 
Oh, no. But, <laughs> yeah. It's but, okay. I can edit know, that out. No. <laughs> the other of them were pop punk, to be fair. The other one was Scream and Fire, if I got it from my, from my Valentine. Which one was that one? Silver Side Up. Oh, that's um, a good one. That's a good one. Mine was The Young and the Hopeless by Good Charlotte. When I was oh, nine, I think. I like that. Yeah. That that was my first ever album that I bought with with my own money. Oh, cool. they're a great um, yeah, yeah, they are. They are so yeah. good. I want to say they're still my favorite band now. I want to say it was so wrong. It's right, all time low. I just remember because it was like two thousand nine or probably earlier than that when that came out. But I just remember like watching Kerrang as like a kid and seeing like oh. the music video for Dear Maria for the first time, like that big song and kind of like. It just kind of encompass, encompassed like everything that I loved and like I was immediately kind of hooked to it and they've kind of just been my favorite favorite band since and have, like their sound has kind of evolved and like changed with my taste as I've got older so they're one of those bands that I always find myself returning to um so I, I want to yeah. say I want to say wrong it's right but that's probably not the first one I bought but that's interesting it's a very influential album on me, I think that's cool because some people's first album is not the genre that they currently play in. So I think that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You guys pretty much collectively stayed within your genre. Yeah. Um, did your first albums, did that play a role in wanting you to be a musician or what did make you want to be a musician? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. listening to it, really, listening to the music. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. 100 million percent. Yes. I was I say, you look very excited about that question. <laughs> yes. I just, I get, dude, I can picture it in my head. The first time yeah. I heard Riot, um, and I was like, oh, shit, this is incredible. Like, it's mine. I was like, this is mind blowingly good. And yeah, I thought, wow, cool. I just have, like, yeah. I, I can do this. You know, not not be yeah. Haley, but I, I could be, I could be a singer too. I could be in my own band. So I, could, mm-hmm. I, I thought I could sing anyway. And this was when I was probably about 12. Um, and then I actually got somewhat good at singing so but um yeah I was I was in love with the album when I first heard it and I it definitely inspired me to do um to want yeah. to be in like a pop punk band rather than do mm. like something solo artistish because that's really amazing I, mm, I mm. also listened, I think one of the first albums I bought as well um one of them was the best damn thing by Avril Lavigne um so that was quite influential as well like musical wise but um it definitely made me want to do the band route rather than the solo artist route. And I'm so glad I did because these guys are So prior, uh, bef- so like prior to getting those albums, were you are still wanting to go down the music career or is that was like, nope, that's it. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. Um, yeah, like I, I started guitar lessons when I was in like year five of like primary school. I don't know why. Wow. I'd always like, I'd be like in the car with my mum, like singing on the radio, and I'd always be was always quite drawn to music. I don't remember a time where I didn't want to do music. Um, I think, yeah, it was back then. It was just like radio kits and kind of like learning songs for like grades on guitar and stuff like that. I wasn't like serious. Uh, but yeah, I think it was when I got into high school and like at like the whole like looking up like Scuzz and like Kerrang and things like that, and starting to buy a Kerrang magazine that I kind of found where I kind of fit into. The world of music and kind of where I uh, yeah and the kind of music I wanted to do and yeah um but yeah I think another thing that kind of like drew me into doing music was like did you guys ever watch like those documentaries that bands put out like or like tour diary videos and stuff like that where you could just yeah, see them going yeah. Up oh yeah oh, hell yeah like just like I I loved the idea of like even when they were like smaller, just like going around just playing shows and like crashing on floors and stuff like that. Just the idea of that kind of lifestyle, just I don't know what it was. It just it sounded so cool to me. Uh, but um, it really yeah, like a little family. Yeah, literally, and yeah, yeah, it's just really cool. <laughs> I think I have to agree with Neil. Just but I wasn't that young when I started doing music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, sixteen. So yeah, nine years ago. So not quite as long as Neil's been playing music. I I was doing like theatre and stuff when I was a kid. So I was always into like acting and I cannot dance to save my life. But I would always do like acting and and singing and stuff. And then when I got to about 10 or 11, um, I remember singing in in music class. um, And I was listening to everyone else and some people sounded pretty bad. And I thought I I sounded okay. And I was like, oh, maybe if I practice a bit, I'll actually be okay. And then I just, I fell in love with singing and I just carried it on. But I didn't want to, I didn't even think about being in a band until I was like 
12, 13 ish. And I've met so many musicians and it never quite worked out. And none of them had the like passion and ambition for it like I did. Like, yeah, um, gotcha. they, it, it, it's a really special thing when you find people who care about something as much as you care about it and they, they want it as much as you want it. So it was such a blessing when I met these guys because they wanted to, to, to like everything that Neil just said, you know, go on tours and, and play music and write things that people enjoy and and meet new people, everything yeah. like that. So, yeah. I feel like I might have been like one of the youngest when I kind of decided that this was something that I wanted to push for a bit more because I was like, mm-hmm. I think I started playing drums when I was 14, uh, about 12, 13 years ago, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. They really decided it was something I wanted to proper push for till I was like 17. Gotcha. Started, I think I joined my first proper band when I was 16. Oh. Didn't really think it was going to do much. And then I think kind of when you get the ball rolling a bit and you start doing start doing more shows and getting out there more, it kind of, kind of fuels the hunger a bit. Yeah, man, it's trial and error, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. it fuels the hunger. So you start playing shows and you just want more of it. Yeah. <laughs> now um i can't remember who but i think it was ryan and i so you can correct me if i'm wrong but did you play a show with slacker because I, I thought i read somewhere that one of you guys played with slacker before yeah yeah i remember yeah, both, yeah. Yeah, both our other bands have played with slacker mine and callum's yeah they're, they're cool. really good i love them they're lovely um, and yeah, they were on the show and uh they're they're awesome guys yeah they're yeah. cool people nicest nicest dudes yeah i'll I'll always remember them both both me and my like the other guitarist in our band we both forgot our guitar straps for this gig (laughs) and we like two minutes before our set we realized we were like oh my gosh (laughs) so i just run up to the singer i'm just like can you please help me out and he just pulls out the straps he's he's so nice about it and he just like didn't even hesitate and yeah he he was he's a solid he's solid guy yeah Yeah, i've never i've never played with him but i have spoken to to the singer uh, a few times through Facebook, and he does genuinely seem like a really nice, solid dude. Yeah, solid Scotty's dude. amazing. Um, my brother was in the hospital for almost two months with COVID, and oh, wow. Scotty found out, and um, he found out that uh, one of his songs really helped my brother when he was in the hospital. You know, just to kind of help him relax, get his mind yeah. off things. So what Scotty did was actually made a, a video. Uh, an acoustic video of him playing that song and sent it to us. So awesome, awesome. Oh, that was cool. Weird. Nice. So um my next question, because I was thinking since you've you know been with bands or played with bands and stuff like that, what was the best piece of advice that another musician has ever given you guys? Hmm. Ooh. I I have an answer. Um so I don't know if you guys have heard of a British band called Rome. They're quite big in the pop punk scene. Yes, actually, I saw them. They played, uh, they opened for Can't Swim, who's a great local yeah. band here. Oh, I've been to um, Can't Swim. They're good dudes. They <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> they're absolutely lovely. And I've um, seen them a few times at gigs, um, had, a, um, had a chat with them a few times. And some of the best advice that I've ever really got about bands is from them. Uh, I spoke to the lead singer. He's a lovely guy. Um, and he said... It's, it sounds really simple, but he said, make sure that you've, you've got a job so you can fund your band because being in a band is very expensive and, right. and just keep pushing. And he was like, just keep writing songs that you believe in, that you love, keep pushing it, keep going, because you might think, it's like anything in life, really. You might think that it's not going anywhere, but you'd be surprised how many people it touches or how many people um, resonate with it. So he said, basically, just make sure you're funding your band by having a job or something. Um, and just just write music you believe in. That was his advice. I thought it was really good advice, and I've um, tried to stick to it as much as I can, really. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't know who who sort of told me, but I remember having a conversation with someone about it. It's like a, a local band, it wasn't any sort of big, you know, big sort of world famous band or anything. But they were they were like, yeah, it was about the money thing as well. It's like it's expensive to do it. So you need to make sure you have a job. So treat it like it's a business. You need to put money in to make it go somewhere. So, yeah, and that's like the more effort you put in, the more you get out kind of thing. But I can't remember who told me that for life of me. (laughs) I remember where I was. Thank you, generous stranger. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I remember where I was. (laughs) 
<laughs> it'll come to you after the name will come to you after the show oh, yeah. i feel like it's like a movie like they'll give you this amazing advice and just disappear yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was actually a figment of your own <laughs> yeah i um once had my mum spend about 150 pounds so i could have vip tickets for Hawthorne heights Oh, oh wow! Nice um, mom. And there was like a part of it. Really like, like, bragging here, Ryan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it was a birthday present. It's fine. But there was a part of it where you just kind of sat backstage and chilled with them and could just chat with them. And I remember showing them, kind of telling them that I'd done music, showing them my old band. They didn't say anything about money, surprisingly enough. Even though, you know, everyone else seems to have chats about money. Uh, it was literally. <laughs> If you want to keep doing it, keep doing it. Yeah, well, I think back when sort of Hawthorne Heights were on the growth of it, it's it was be good. Yeah, I mean know. Hawthorne Heights was kind of all the bands yeah. that got signed to that label at the time kind of done showcases. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know exactly, exactly, exactly how it still growth, works yeah. to be honest, but I know <laughs> that there was a lot of showcases. They show up and play two or three songs for for labels. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's when the sort of labels would throw money at the band, really, so that they could fund it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, it's that, well, I can't remember the video, but Blink 182 with the £500,000 check. The uh, Rock Show video. Oh, rock yeah. Show. Rock Show that video, was, yeah. That was a cool like, video. Nowadays, you'd be lucky to sort of get 10, 20 grand for a music video. Yeah. You know, that's, that's if you're a big band. I love that so, advice, though, from your mum. It's like mm. life's just really too short to, to not. Yeah. Just and unless my mum's in Hawthorne Heights, then it wasn't from my mum, but fair enough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about your mum, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can't get Ryan's mum off of our minds, apparently. <laughs> I'll have a word with her. Uh, just, like, find out if she was accidentally in Hawthorne Heights. Yeah. <laughs> of course she was. Maybe. Um, I'm trying to think of either of me. Um, I, think, I think a lot of the advice that, I, that, come, like, that comes to my mind is kind of, like, related to, like, songwriting. Uh, just because it's kind of something that I've been working on and kind of developing for a lot. It's like one of my, like my favorite things about music is just writing songs. But yeah, I think like I was told like whilst writing songs that just to make sure that like the instruments are there to kind of like, I'm trying to think of how to word it. If the vocal melody isn't there, then it's not kind of ready kind of thing. Just to make sure like the vocal melody stands out and like it's catchy and uh, it's something that people can resonate with basically. Um, gotcha. And yeah, just don't get too focused on making like instrumentals or like flashy or like playing like everyone doing like flashy stuff uh, and just playing to serve the song, I think is really handy for musicians to know. Like obviously like the guitar solos are awesome and everything like that, but uh, if there's like a chorus where the melody and the hook needs to be like the forefront, you don't want to have like masses of things going over it or like everyone playing over each other. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, that thing of like playing as a unit and like working together to make something awesome instead of like trying to overplay yourself kind of thing. I remember hearing like that and like when I was like much younger, but yeah. So now that we've thought about what people have told you, um, also thinking about the experiences you've learned up to where you're at now, hmm. what would you say to someone who's maybe starting out a band right now? What advice would you give them? Don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say ryan don't be a dick don't be a dick that's good advice my, my advice is one thing that really really like helped me and made my songwriting just go like so much better after i started realizing it is um there's no such thing as perfect and i know that sounds <laughs> obvious but you can you can agonize over like a painting or a drawing or like a, a script that you're writing or anything or you know like song lyrics you can agonize over it for hours and hours and hours and if you're someone who like struggles with anxiety or something it can really chasing like perfect or uh, worrying what people are going to think about it is yeah. is a massive thing so all, all all i would say about um you know trying to, trying to write something that you love is just just don't try and make it perfect just do it the do it the best you can because the best you can is all you can give. I know that sounds like I'm trying to be really deep, gotcha. but um, <laughs> yeah, just just try your just try your best, and that will someone will love it. You know, yeah. someone will absolutely love it because all the all these all the songs that I've done, I could listen to it about a million times with the band and and try and pick out little things you change. But it's it's perfectly imperfect. You know, it's 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 gotcha. great the way it is, and someone will love it that way. So yeah, well, yeah. even your favorite band has haters. 
Oh yeah, he copies everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely yeah, definitely just do what you want to do. Don't do it to please other people, because Mm. I think the more honest music is, the better it will. You know, the better it will come out Mm. in terms of the way that you see it as a person. Mm. You know, there there will always be people that don't like it, but there'll be many more people that do. Yeah. So yeah, 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 I think think just that and just keep keep going. Just don't stop. Nice. So Neil, um, nice. you're the last one on that one. Uh, yeah, I think for me, uh, I, I wish someone had said this to me, but it's like, if you don't know where to start, just start anyway and just yeah. kind of do, just do what you want to do. Just write a, a thousand songs. You may write like 999 rubbish songs, but you'll get better as you write and you'll get better at playing shows the more you play shows. And it's the same with anything. It's like... Uh, you put in your a thousand hours and you get better at what you want to do and if you want to do it like just start as soon as you can just get right. like a rubbish guitar or like a 30 pound guitar just start doing it you can invest in all the flashy gear and all the flashy materials and all of that later but just just start doing it and kind of foster your kind of creativity early and just do as much as you can um and yeah you the more you do the more likely you are to stumble onto something amazing so yeah, don't be afraid to be different either Very and try shit out and yeah. Oops. yeah. And be open to change as well and criticism. Like if somebody, if you work, you know, all the time in the music industry, someone will, will when you're writing something, they'll say that then you're tweaking, that's not working, that's just, mm-hmm. nah, that's not it. And you can't, you know, you can't be defensive or feel too attached to it. You have to think of it objectively as, mm-hmm. you know, because you're writing it for fans, you're writing it for people listening so you want it to be the best it can be so sometimes someone else's ideas are going to make it better and it's it's easy to get defensive and think no I want it to be the way I want it but it's one of the best things is is just being open and taking on loads of different ideas from different people because it will improve your music very great advice good advice I want to play another song from you guys um what can you tell us about the song not what I want so not what I want has a similar similar kind of meanings to bones um, to be honest, um, a lot of those a lot of those songs were were written, as I said, at, at a time when I was kind of getting over a lot of different things um, gotcha. from different like friendship groups and and things like that. So a lot of it a lot of it's about growth and moving on. But um, not what I want is about sort of the realization. It might be kind of obvious in the lyrics, but it's about realizing that something is this group is isn't what you want. It's not what you thought it would be. And um, there's there's no shame in moving away and kind of leaving to- toxic things behind you leaving negativity behind you because no matter what it is um sometimes you just have to leave the past behind and just just keep your eye on the prize and mm. so that's that's pretty much the ideas behind not what i want yeah it's also the shortest song at what two minutes oh, and eight yeah. seconds because i couldn't figure out how to end it so i was just like oh, it sounds fun about <laughs> <laughs> nice it works it's so, the most popular song on streaming platforms and Facebook. And all right. that, so. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> all right. Well, here is their most popular song, Not What I Want by mm-hmm. Autumn Fires. But 
Welcome back to the show, everyone. Um, I cannot remember the timeline of when shows uh, like were shut down in England. Were, was your band able to play any shows before the lockdown? No. Not at all. Gotcha. No. It's um, you know, I think we, 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 we had like a, a final sort of lineup at the time, about three weeks before it all shut down. Um, I gotcha. think it was like the last last week of february or something i think jamie had joined and then okay. like 20th of march no 23rd of march wasn't it, it just, they just went nah and it hasn't been opened again since so okay now yeah. here in the states every state is different um like some are completely 100 percent open some are open but only with limited light you know limited capacities yeah. Now, what is it like for you guys? Is that like a country thing, or is it every area is a little different? I guess uh, the whole country. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. England, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland are all different. So if you look at it as like, you know, the, the UK, it, it is all different. But here in England, yeah, everywhere is opening at the same same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So I want to say it's 21st of June that they're actually doing it, but I think yeah. there might be some... Yeah. The only Little time opening in May. The only time they ever had any sort of different rules um, or guidelines rather was over sort of Christmas period here. So um, they had like a tier system and certain um, regions could could do different things. But now it's pretty much the same across the board. Yeah. Okay. On episode 10, I had David Alexander on the show from the lead singer of Carousel Kings. Okay. And yeah. I was able to find an interview that he did way back when he started the band. And he was asked, if you could play any venue, where what would it be? And the whole band pretty much unanimously, unanimous, ah, or whatever. The band almost <laughs> at the same time said Warp Tour. <laughs> and oh. they were like, oh, if I could play Warp Tour, that would be the ultimate. And I just thought that was such a cool interview because now they're like, they were like veterans multiple times on Warp Tour. You know, yeah. so talking to him about what it was like looking back was really cool. And hmm. I kind of think that's the same with you guys. I think you guys have an awesome future. So I want to be the one that asks you now, <laughs> if you could play any venue in the world, what would it be? I think we all would probably have a very similar, if not the same answer. Um, slam dunk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I know you do. I know you guys don't have slam dunk there, but it's like the it's like the pop punk festival here. Um yeah, it's okay. it's kind of like your walk tour, I suppose, but okay. obviously oh, like, okay. um, yeah. Yeah. it's amazing though. Yeah, they do it north and south over yeah. the May bank holiday weekend. But yeah, oh, so like, can you can you tell us more about that? Because no, I've heard it from from my UK guest, but I don't really know. So warp tour was like in multiple cities and multiple days, crap load of bands, mm. like is it that type of thing? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's two days, but yeah. Two days, okay. Yeah, yeah. just two days. But um, yeah, it's like a day festival. So it all happens across like one day. So like one day they'll be in like, say, Leeds. I think it's Leeds. And then the yeah. other day it's, yeah, yeah, and it's in Hatfield. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes they do one in like in the middle of those two places as well. So there's like a third day. But I don't, yeah. I think they bought that recently. I'm not sure. Yeah, they but, stopped uh, doing that. They got two bigger venues in Leeds and Hatfield okay. and just the Midlands one. It's, um, yeah. It's usually yeah. like quite big headliners, though. They have things like Simple Plan, All Time Low. Yeah, um, it was All Time Low last yeah, time, wasn't it? Yeah, Newfound yeah. Glory, uh, Panic at the Disco. Like, big bands. And they have mm. loads of different stages as well. But they have um, smaller stages with um, like smaller acts. And it's pretty much entirely um pop punk alternative mm -hmm. metal yes. it's it's that kind of festival but it's amazing because yeah, awesome. the the vibe it's like when you walk in there's like a hundred people who like the same things you like oh. um actually no probably like like twenty thousand people yeah. to be honest yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't know why i said hundred yeah, yeah. Bust, a lot of busted played last time in yeah. a really small so they had a tent that was split in two and they had a stage on two oh. sides and so whilst one band was playing the other band was setting mm -hmm. up kind of thing um hmm. tent wasn't very big but busted were playing on one of those two stages and the 
the amount of people in there, I mean, it must have gone like 40, 50 meters out of the tent. Do you guys, do you guys know Busted? I don't. No. I don't, no. <laughs> they're basically like, they're basically like the UK version of Blink-182, I suppose, but okay. they were really, really big, maybe like- Well, I will look them up now. <laughs> oh, Busted yeah. 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 Uh, uh, that's so weird to think. I, I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't know they were like just. A, are they just like a UK thing? Yeah. I busted not yeah, like a. Yeah, but busted aren't really known saying. anywhere else. It's, uh, it's crazy. They're, they're so big in the UK, but it's but they they were big in or they're not big sort of in other countries, but they're amazing. Yeah. They are literally like twenty two. Yeah. Well, judging yeah. by your reaction, I'm probably going to get like a bunch of comments from people in the UK be like, what? What? How have you not heard of them? I think his name is Ben, but he, uh, the organizer of Slam, Slam Dunk, if you're listening, we are always available. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. So see, now, uh, now I have a reference point. So now when you guys do get on Slam Dunk, I'm going to message you and be like, hey, remember that episode? <laughs> yeah. What cities would be your ideal places to play? I guess I just want to do a, a decent London show. I'd, I'd be happy to do it. A good London show. Yeah. Gotcha. When I've played in a lot of cities here in England and even in Wales, but I don't have any that I'm like itching to go to because I've probably already been there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the opposite. I want to go everywhere. Like yeah. I'd love to play loads of UK shows up and down yeah. the UK. But honestly, I'd love to come over to the US again. And yeah. um, I, haven't, I haven't played in the US, but I'd love to um, mm. play some play some shows for us. And um, yeah, hundred percent. Just just anywhere. Just yeah. I just want to play shows and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, cool. I know. I get come you. Come to the US. <laughs> that was my answer as well. I was. I'm the same as Charles. Like, I know it's like way down the line from here, but like whenever we can play shows, like. I would love to just play shows everywhere. Like that's one of the, one of the things that appeals to like being in a band to me is just going to all of these different places and seeing them and playing shows there. Um, so yeah, just as many places. I'd love to do just like a whole round of the states. That'd be that'd be awesome. Awesome. But, yeah. Yeah, it's funny thinking of shows because when COVID started you know, people at first were like, oh, like, so if we do shows, they'll have to be like social distance. You'll have to sit at a table. And everyone's like, that's stupid. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but now it's been so long. Everyone's like, I would love to sit at a table <laughs> and, you know, just to see a show. Yeah. 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 Um, f so when you have played on stage, how did you handle if you make a mistake? Uh, I usually swear really loudly and then carry on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, well, I, I I just keep playing because I, I think most people probably wouldn't notice. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry, don't make an absolutely massive mistake. Like as like as Ryan of a, as a drummer, if he just stopped playing drums, kind of thing. <laughs> I did that once. <laughs> you did that yeah. once. <laughs> yeah. So the first proper band I was in, we were playing, and it was like the first time we played this song live, <laughs> and it was a double chorus at the end, and I forgot, so I stopped oh. after one chorus. <laughs> Everyone else kept playing. And then, nice. Yeah, it was really awkward. <laughs> That's funny. I think I just laugh it up. If it was something obvious, like if I just forgot the whole song, I'd probably just just laugh and just get get the audience to sing it <laughs> if they knew it. Um, yeah, it's not, I mean to be honest, you know, as long as as long as you're having fun and and enjoying it in the moment, I don't think anyone would really mind. No one's going to mm. say I went to Norton Fire's show and it was really good, except. Like Charlotte forgot this one lyric, so I've never seen it again. <laughs> well, hopefully yeah. they will. <laughs> I only yeah. played in front of people once, and it was uh, at a place called the House of Blues, and there was about 250 people, and I was so I like nauseous that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be sick. Did for you guys? Did that feeling ever go away, or did you still get nauseous when you play in front of people? Or what um, was it like? I I don't think I ever had that feeling. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. As weird as it is, I I kind yeah. of just. I yeah. used to. I used to have this really, really weird, like, leg twitch when I played. <laughs> uh, so, like, I'd be, like, standing and playing, and my right leg would just be, like, bouncing all over the place. <laughs> and it's, that's only gone away since, uh, since playing, like, regularly playing shows in my last band. Or, I say my last band, I'm still in the band, but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, like, but getting into, like, playing shows on, like, a regular basis just really helped me. It's, it's that whole thing of, like, if you're afraid of doing something, like, the best way to kind of overcome that fear is kind of just exposing yourself to it and yeah. just doing it. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. 
Gotcha. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever had that either. I mean, I just, I, I'm, I'm very good at doing. I just do random shit. <laughs> like, we, we had a step. There was a place called the Hat Factory in Harpenden. Uh, no, not Hat Factory. The Factory in Harpenden. Uh, it had like a stage that's like three or four feet high, and there was a guy just leant on it with his back to us. So I just sat on his shoulders, <laughs> and he, he walked around. That's the one with the skate park in it. Yeah, that's a sick yeah. venue. That one's yeah. so cool. That yeah. sounds cool. Has, um, half of it's the skate park, and the other half of it is the stage. It's yeah. like, I really like that. That sounds oh, awesome. Wow. It, yeah, it, so it is cool. cool. It, no, my spot it is cool. I think it's closed down now. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah the building's <laughs> all damaged. Oh. But yeah, like, well, I played I played shows with other bands who have done like a cover song and I just walked up to one of their guitarists and just put my guitar on their shoulders and gone to the bar or something. You know, <laughs> literally just let them carry on. I, I, I don't really know the song, so, That's you know, cool. but yeah, I don't, I, I li- never on stage have I been sort of scared awesome. or nervous or whatever, oh. you know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't really get, I'm one of those I'm one of those weird. I'm weird. Uh, I'm just, I'm one of those weird types where I could happily sing. <laughs> yeah, I could sing in front of like um, hundreds, thousands of people, and I would feel totally at home. But if it was wow, something like, awesome. um, if my my boss said, "Sean, I need to speak with you a moment," then I'd be absolutely killing <laughs> myself. So I'm the kind of person where I like when I'm in my element and like music fine absolutely mm. let's go i can do it i feel confident but yeah awkward situations mm. i think it's worse to, i think it's worse <laughs> to play in front of less people oh yeah, yeah like one person yeah 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 it. i think it's probably worse to do that it's always a bit i, I say disheartening <laughs> sort of thing, but <laughs> like, we've, we've all had those shows where it's just us and like there's like the band and then just the guy working the bar is the only person watching yeah. it's just not even Charlotte's come. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, actually, I that's think... pretty. That's pretty funny. Your your comment made me think. Uh, a couple episodes ago, I had a band called College Radio on, and they did. They're from Canada. Or excuse me, uh, out by Seattle, and they uh, they did this show that was like a social distancing show, so there was no one in the audience, and I'm like how did you you know put on so much energy to an empty crowd like that and their answer was kind of like what you were saying they were like you know what i've been preparing for this my whole career i've played plenty of empty shows <laughs> yeah i think yeah i think the thing is it, uh, you have to put like the energy into a show even if there's no one there i feel like you have to put the energy as if it was a packed room because once you get to that point hopefully where there is a packed room you want to be as ready as you can be and you want to kind of have that infectious energy because if you I, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience where you're watching a band and they're all just kind of stood still and they don't really seem like they want to be there that, yeah that energy just it just it, I think it carries over to the crowd whereas if you're up there having like the time of your life that the crowd are going to be like oh this is cool like they're more likely yeah. to kind of vibe with what you're doing so yeah just practice even if you're playing an empty show just treat it like you're playing the biggest show of your life yeah. So, yeah, also, definitely. you never know how much, sounds kind of cheesy, but you never know how much it's going to, um, like, mean to somebody. Like, that that one per- that one sound dude sitting in the back, he mm-hmm. could be like, wow, that band was incredible, and tell 10 of his friends about it, mm-hmm. and then they might come to your show, and then you've got, you've got mm-hmm. fans, you know? So Yeah, yeah. If, that's true. If, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you put on a, a terrible show, yeah. then that guy's going to be like, wow, I'm never working with them again. They were awful. Yeah. Like, yeah. like don't go and see that band so it's just it's yeah. always work just, yeah yeah, uh, yeah uh, like i've got an example of that like there was i won't name the band because that's you know, that's really bad yeah, but, they don't do that. like um <laughs> there, there was a band that i played a gig with so we were their main support um they were they're pretty they were pretty big they got like 30 odd thousand likes on facebook their twitter's really you know massive as well so they doing good on social media you know and they were saying t- tickets are selling out everywhere this that and the other to us um, and we arrive at the venue for sort of load in and sound check and there's there's three people um three girls just sat at the front you know trying to jump the queue that are clearly to see them they've got merch on everything those are the only three people that showed up to that gig and that band wow. did not want to be there that band literally the most dead i've ever seen 
oh, you know I mean, gotcha. like there were some like our friends that come down you know like but when 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 we're done they they go to the bar or something you know they don't sit around for the other bands and it was just those three people and that band did not want to play that and they were very upset about it oh that's you know, i actually have an Yikes. example for that <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to play one more song from you guys. Um, what can you tell us about Under Starlight? So Under Starlight was the first the first single that we released. Me and Callum wrote it um, probably a good few months before we met the other guys. Um, and it's, it's, personally, it's my favourite that we've released so far. Mm. Um, it's, I, I just absolutely love it. I think it's it's quite catchy. It's it's quite um, sort of new, new pop punk, like new wave pop punk. Um, gotcha. And yeah, I hmm. I just I just really adore it. It's it's yeah. it's got a similar kind of angsty vibe to the, to the other songs that we've done. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely up there with with, with my favourites for sure. Yeah. Fun story about that song. That was the uh, the song that I heard from these guys before I joined the band, and I just I loved it. Oh, cool. So I was like. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, I remember it like popping up on my Facebook and like hearing like the chorus and like the intro and guitar for the first time and being like, oh, these guys are good. <laughs> and I was just like, like the Facebook page, keep an eye on them. Yeah. So, so that's why you were so such a rush to reply to our Facebooks about looking for a bassist. <laughs> Funny story. Um, I actually, I actually, I didn't own a bass before auditioning for the band. Uh, oh, really? I saw, yeah, I saw the vacancy. Uh, I'm pro I like primarily a uh, singer and guitarist, um, but I saw these guys were auditioning for a bassist. So um, I was talking to Charlotte, <laughs> like two days after I saw that they had the vacancy, I just like messaged her like, hi, I've bought a bass, <laughs> I'm going to audition. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. Imagine if we need like a trumpet player or something, but well, damn, I've got to learn the trumpet now. Well, <laughs> imagine, imagine, yeah. if we just, imagine if we just didn't like Neil. Oh, imagine. No. <laughs> like imagine. Neil. And he spent 300 quid on the base that he's pulling up the years. Literally. Yeah. So um, impulse buys, everyone. Good decisions. Dude, that's that's some serious dedication. You went out and bought the base before you were even in the band. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All Thank right. You so here is the song that made him buy a base. Here's <laughs> Under Starlight by Autumn Fires. <laughs> Just our lives 
welcome back to the show, guys. All the songs that I've just played so far are just singles, and I heard that you have an EP coming out, but these songs are not going to be a part of that. Is that correct? Yes. That's true. Very gotcha. correct. Um, yeah. So what can your fans expect of the new EP? Well, I think so. I think with the EP, we were kind of struggling as to what songs we should really put on it because we wanted to do the best ones that we had. I think we had a pool of about 12 to 15 songs. Um, and our latest single, Back to Life, was going to be on it, but there was a couple more that we wrote out and we thought they were better. So I think you can expect over the next, what, eight months, nine months maybe? Yeah. Um, just what we think are, you know, good songs that That's we, fun. that are definitely like I've, I've been listening to sort of thing. Um, and I think they're very, they're very sort of pop punk and very the direction that we are. And it gives mm -hmm. us a proper, proper sound, proper yeah. name for ourselves. So yeah, that's that's what I think you can expect. Yeah. We're really, Honestly. really proud of them, and mm. yeah, we. I'm, I'm I'm so I know we're all so excited to, <laughs> to show everyone. It's it's annoying having to wait, but like it's I'm so <laughs> yeah. excited because I know everyone's everyone's hopefully gonna gonna really love them. We're super proud of them, and and there are there are first singles that were it was always all done by. Um, the producer that we work with who's a close friend of ours um luke from royals and um, he's really really amazing and the the job he's done on them is incredible so i'm yeah we're really looking forward to, to showing everyone very nice yeah um so you guys are about to start the new chapter of the band and you guys are finishing up your current chapter with like you mentioned the brand new single uh back to life what can you tell us about that song back to life um is very, I don't want to say very similar to the other ones we've done, but all the singles that we did <laughs> had a, a similar kind of vibe. Um, gotcha. So it, it's a little bit different um, musically. It, it does have sort of a slower tempo and it's a little bit more sort of ominous and, and dark than, than the others that we've done. The others have been very sort of boppy, but this one, the, the, the verses and the chorus are a little bit kind of a different vibe. And um, mm -hmm. it's mainly just about moving on I guess you know I was gonna say that because I've said that before <laughs> as well. but the, the, the singles do have it, it's, it's a lot of running themes I think it's probably similar with the the EP that we've got coming out as well it's um we like to have a little bit of consistency through the through the songs that we write so and um, yeah the, the single back to life is about moving on and rebirth and, and kind of reinventing yourself or or moving on from from your past so that's yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, gotcha. No, actually, that does make sense. It's funny because the last guest I had on the show was a band from Australia. And it was funny because every song I picked was about like a breakup song. And he's like, I really don't know why. He's like, I'm happily married. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, that's just kind of like the the what appeals to him musically. So, <laughs> so I get yeah. it. It's all cool. <laughs> um, so here is the song Back to Life by Autumn's Fires. Thought 
Instagram. Welcome back to the show, guys. So keeping with that theme of looking ahead, what are your goals as a band? I think our next goal that we want to do is play slam dunk. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably like our, our like proper this is what we're working to goal. Um That's but cool. breaking it down into little bits, I think next is gonna be playing shows, making sure we we're prepared, that we're ready, that we know exactly what we're playing, and that we're tight on sort of, you know, all of our instruments so that we can give everyone sort of a good sound. Um other than that, just more more singles maybe like a, a record just different ways to sort of help ourselves move forward maybe videos photo shoots just things that we can do to give everyone you know a little bit more of a piece of who we are gotcha. networking we want to reach people that's one of the biggest things that we want to focus on in like yeah. the next sort of year is is reaching as many people as we can and um, as many fans as we can and yeah. and trying to um, yeah, just get our music out there, really, because obviously it's been difficult with the whole crazy COVID thing. But we, yeah, yeah we we want to be able to to just reach as many people as 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 possible, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of I think a big goal for us for the next like year. The last part of the show, I like to ask my guests to speak to their fans, and I ask them. What would you like to say to your fans? Oh, wow. What should we say? To, um, thank you so much for everything that you guys have done. Everyone that's bought a t-shirt, everyone that's um, streamed or downloaded our songs, anyone that's told their mum, their nan, their dog about our band. Um, it's just, it really means a lot to us because we couldn't, we couldn't do any of the stuff that we do without, without people loving the band and listening to it. And it's just, we, have, we get so many amazing, like, messages and comments um from from people it just it really means a lot to us i know everyone always says that but it, it really does every time every time anyone comments or messages we always like i feel really giddy we're like oh thank you so yeah, much it, 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 yeah you, we, we do so. it really means a lot to us because yeah. um we, we just couldn't do it without you so thank you so much um if you, yeah. if, if anyone wants to buy a t-shirt we still have t-shirts available or they want to listen to our music then we do but yeah thank you so much for everything that you guys have done because you're just so amazing very nice and neil um uh, anything else you want to add what would you like to say to your fans honestly i'm I, i'm just saying get ready for the ep number one <laughs> <laughs> You, you think you you think you've got top tier, but top tier is is right here, and that's where that's where EP EP one is. In, in my opinion, I, I think I think yeah, you're 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 in for some tunes, and just just be ready, just be ready. Very nice. Well, I will have a link in the description below uh, where you can follow the band from their link tree. They ha it'll have the links to their Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of your your typical places, uh, their merch store. For those at home that are watching, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe and come back next week when we, when we have a new band. And guys, thank you so much. It was a blast. Thank you, guys. Thank you.